the NFL on EA Sports. Today's game features two safeties who have been key contributors to very successful teams. It's Earl Thomas III going up against Devin McCourty. With kickoff straight ahead, let's check in with the two men who will be calling tonight's game. As we say hello to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford, we are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. Coming up is a rematch of that memorable Super Bowl 49 between the Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person, big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche, but we know this. The ground's going to shake, things are going to rumble, and they're going to have an impact on today's game. Their meeting in Super Bowl 49 was thrilling. What's in store here? The Pats and Seahawks are underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Seattle's offense coming out of the field, and their quarterback is Russell Wilson. Now, you saw him in Week 8 in that game against New Orleans, 253 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception. And you know he's had leg injuries throughout the season. It started with an ankle, then he had a knee, and now they think that he's starting to improve, but you can still see a little bit of a hitch in his giddy-up as he tries to take off and exit the pocket, but he's playing so well from the pocket that he's still a major factor. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And the grab made by Doug Baldwin. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael. A gain of three, second down. Michael had his fifth visit to the end zone in week eight. 40 yards on 10 carries, though, so not a whole lot of production for him. Began the season hot. I mean, came out really blazing and looked like he would be able to replace Thomas Rawls' production from last year. But in recent weeks, that number has continued to go down, and Seattle's throwing the ball more than ever. So one quarter in the books. It's a rematch of Super Bowl 49. It's a tight game here early, and we'll return to Foxborough after this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They face a second and seven to start things out. On second down, Baldwin with it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that's going to bring up the third down. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Third down and three. Wilson now to throw on third down. 
Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this time, not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. They go play fake to Michael. Now Wilson. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete, stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. On is Hauschka now for the Seahawk field goal. From the right hash, this from 48. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. So they get the field goal here at the end of the second quarter and take the lead into the lockers. And isn't that what every team wants to do? Right at the end of the half, put points on the board and go into the locker room feeling a lot better about themselves. To the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. Danny Amendola on the return. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Both the Patriots and the Seahawks haven't had a reliable run game so far. The push-up front has not been there, and you have to give credit to both defenses on that front. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Seahawks opening up on offense. Baldwin's the target here, and that connection will lead to a gain of 19 yards. Unfortunately, they would have to settle for just a field goal. Second half still to come. Let's get back up to Foxborough with Brandon and Charles. Okay, Larry, thank you. Just a lone field goal in that first half. Will the offenses show up? That's now the question.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. He'll get it up only to about the 24. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. They'll run again with Blunt, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive banks now. Back to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Now Brady gotta have this one. They will find his man, that's Hogan complete. That'll be a gain of 16. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. And now it looks like they're gonna be in the hurry up. They'll look to throw. And he finds Danny Amendola. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 21. And it'll be first down, New England. Well, they got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. He's back to throw. Right side, that's complete to Gronkowski. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Off 
offense comes to the line now, first and ten. to throw looking for someone to throw to looking sideline incomplete Danny Amendola the man he was trying to get it to and now it's second down hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one but that's the exact right throw either your receiver gets it or no one gets it give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it got rid of it no one got it Brady gives now to Blunt. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. They'll run it here. This is James White. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaughan alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goal post. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So this hasn't exactly been a battle of one touchdown after another, but at 3-3 now here in the fourth, it's been a pretty doggone entertaining game. Yeah, it's kind of like a pitcher's duel in baseball, don't you think? The aficionados can appreciate a tightly fought game like this. Yeah, but the fantasy players, not so much. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And some good coverage there by the kick team as they'll bring him down at the 16-yard line. Well, four quarters wasn't enough, my friend, and it turns out overtime is not enough. There's no PKs in American football, and this one is over dead even. Can you imagine the teams in their locker room now? going back over this game, 
analyzing every play, each guy thinking, if I had done this on this play or that on the, who knows what could have happened because, let's face it, a tie can be exciting to go through to get to overtime, but it's not satisfying for either one. Nothing between these two teams for four quarters. Here we go to begin overtime. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're set for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. One receiver left, two to the right. Now it's Wilson, and he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. So a second down in completion now brings up third down. On third down, Wilson. And able to find Graham, complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. down just shy of the 45. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final stoppage here in overtime, and we'll be back. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They run again with Michael. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Well, how about this? The very, very rare tie that we just witnessed. Hard to believe. You don't see it very often. A bonus period of football, yet both teams go home a little bit unsatisfied.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com.